What's up guys? We are back with another SH Figure Arts Star Wars review. Easily one of the most anticipated figures in this line right now. There's no possibility for that to be anything other than the case because we're taking a look at Boba Fett. It's the Fett Man. How could you not want this figure? And we've had Jango for a really long time and frankly I was always of the opinion that we should have gotten Boba first, but hopefully they learn from their mistakes on that one and have uh, put a little more thought into this guy. So we have got a lot riding on this figure. Now, of course, this guy comes in the standard packaging for this line because he is a retail release. So you've got the window box. so You can see the figure in all of his glory. We've got the lightsaber style motif that runs down the side. And then the back of the package has got a bunch of product shots of Boba Fett. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull this guy up and take a look. And here he is out of the package at long last, our SH Figure Arts Boba Fett Return of the Jedi version specifically. Something that I've really been looking forward to because I've wanted an import Boba Fett for my figure art shelf for a very long time. And I know, I know, there is the Mafex versions. We've got two different figures from them, but I'm a line collector. I collect Star Wars figure arts. I don't get into Mafex stuff. It's just not what I do. So I didn't buy a one-off figure to shove into a different collection. I waited for this guy, and I think... I think the wait's been worth it. I'm pretty happy with how he's turned out. I've been comparing him quite a bit to Django in my head to actually get an idea of what's better, and there's definitely some improvement here. They definitely learned their lesson, it seems, from that figure, because Django's kind of rough as far as the figure arts goes. This guy is a lot more fun to mess around with. So let's jump right in, take a look, see what he can do. There's some interesting stuff going on with how he moves around. So you've got a head that can look up pretty far, of course, he could look further back if the uh, the rocket pack wasn't in his way. He goes down, and then the neck moves as well. So you've kind of got this like chicken head thing where it goes all the way around, and then full rotation, so the neck is moving as well. The arms go out, and then they actually go all the way around in the socket here. They can almost have kind of a drop-down effect, similar to what you see on a lot of figure arts legs, but it's the arm here. And then you've got, of course, full rotation all the way around, and you've got cantilevered shoulder pads here to help cover the joint and allow you to move them a little better. You've got a bicep swivel here, Double jointed elbows give you pretty good range of motion. You've got your ball hinges at the wrist and they move well. The gauntlets do get in the way. They don't hinder the articulation. They just get in the way of you kind of moving him, if that makes any sense. It makes the act of doing it a little more difficult than it probably should be, but it still works. You've got your diaphragm twist and you've got your waist twist down here. So you've got the ball peg down there and he can move forward, but only slightly. And he goes back pretty decently. Of course, bobbles all the way around and then you can twist at the waist and then you can twist at the diaphragm as well. The legs go out pretty far and you're not going to get a full splits on him, but they do move well enough. Kick forward, they kick backward. You've got your thigh cut there. You've got double jointed knees. You've got cape falling action. And then you've got rotation at the ankle. You've got rocker, you've got hinge forward and backward, and then you've got toe articulation as well. So he does move pretty well. The only real downside for me is that I wish he had a little bit better crunch. Of course, he has the armor plate there. So just like the Black Series, it, it's something that the sculpt kind of gets in the way of its, of its articulation. But he does move well, and I've had really no problems getting him into some really solid poses. Now, as far as the overall look and feel here, I'm pretty happy with the way he turned out. I know that some folks are probably going to wish he was a little bit dirty in some respects, and I think this very much falls in line with the figure arts aesthetic. He is weathered, and he has like the battle damage and the wear and tear on the armor, but he's not exactly dirtied. So your mileage may vary on whether that bothers you. It doesn't exactly bother me here. I think the colors are really nice. Everything is saturated and vibrant and bright, and it just looks good. This very much looks like a Boba Fett to me. I'm really, really happy with the way he turned out. So, of course, you've got the green armor. You've got all this metallic paint to, sh to show the battle damage, wear and tear, and it's very reflective, very shiny. More of it on the yellow shoulder pads. You've got the death's head, which is tampoed really nicely. The jaster's freel tampoed really nicely. The gauntlets with the kind of maroony brown paint with some nice metallic accents on those. Tons of little sculpted detail all over those guys. You've got your free-floating Wookiee braids. These will maybe get in the way of your, your moving this arm around. They probably won't, but, you know, they might sink into that joint because they do, they do kind of move around so it actually helps rather than hinders your articulation. So I do like that. You've got the pouches on the belt, which are actually articulated. I didn't talk about these previously because, well, they aren't articulation for the sake of articulation. The same goes with the uh, little boosters on the back of the jetpack. They are little ball pegs in here. And of course, this being the Return of the Jedi version, the rocket pack is very much more vibrantly colored with a lot of different colors rather than just the kind of green that it normally is. You've got your uh, 
exploding cape falling action piece here. This thing is kind of annoying. It does pop out from time to time, but it looks good. It just pegs into his shoulder because it is a separate piece. So just watch out when you're moving it. Once it's in there, it's going to stay, but if you're posing him, it might pop out from time to time. And then, of course, you've got more of those yellow pieces with more little kind of greebling pieces on the little detailed spikes that pop out. More metallic paint. You've got his little doodads down here in the pockets on his shins. And then, of course, you've got the boots with some nice metallic paint at the front with the little spikes that kick out there. And he just looks good. That's really what it comes down to for me. He just looks good. This is very much a Boba Fett as far as I'm concerned. I'm really, really pleased with how he turned out. And, uh, yeah, there's really not a lot that I'm going to complain about when it comes to the aesthetics on this guy. And I'm even happier about the helmet, all things considered. Because I know I'm not alone in saying that... Well, the helmet has to be at least somewhat right, or what's the point of having the figure? And this looks really good to me. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I think the reflective, shiny metallic paint for the silver accents really, really help make him pop. It catches the light, as does the really glossy visor. You've got some of the, you know, yellow markings that run down the side, the maroony brown uh, colors that match the gauntlets, and then you also have a nice moving rangefinder as well. So a couple other little things on this figure that move that don't actually pose him but do have some articulating pieces are all Always nice and it's just a well sculpted well painted helmet I'm really happy the way it turned out it's Boba Fett there's not much more to say about it now as far as accessories goes this figure is kind of light that said I'm not too sure that there is a great deal that we should really be expecting there are definitely things that we could have gotten but as far as just what you get with a Boba Fett figure you kind of get that here so he has extra hands and then he has a gun basically so you've got a set of uh, more open than normal gripping hands because these are meant to hold like the barrel of the gun. So you've got a set of these. You've got a set of pointing finger slash trigger finger holding hands. So these are what you'd actually grip the, the trigger of the gun with, but they also double as pointing fingers. So you've got a set of those. And then you've got a set of splayed finger open palm hands. So you can kind of have him just doing kind of a flourish with his fingers. They also work to hold the the, the barrel of the gun as well. And then you have the aforementioned gun. So this is, of course, his blaster rifle that we see in the movie. Sculpt is pretty solid on it. Paints are okay. It's not covered in paint, but it's certainly not devoid of it either. It looks good. It fits well in his hands. He holds it just fine, and it gets the job done. That said, there are a few things that I kind of wish we would have gotten. Realistically, what I would have liked to have gotten would have just been some flame effects of some kind, because he has the flamethrower on his wrist, and he's got the jetpack, and they both get used in Return of the Jedi, so... I don't know. That would have been one thing to have gotten. I have plenty of flame effects that I can throw around with this figure, but it's nice to get something that's meant for him because you really don't have many other options. He just comes with the hands and the gun. So it's not nothing, but it's also kind of the bare minimum, especially for a figure arts. And then, of course, like I said, here is a quick comparison between the Boba Fett figure arts and the Boba Fett Black Series. So there's not a lot to compare to, really. There's not real much of a reason to either, outside of maybe for scale comparisons, because you can see the Black Series is a little bit bigger. Not much, though. They are pretty close, surprisingly, which is usually not the case with these two lines. But I think that they stack up pretty well. You can tell just exactly what some of the differences are between the Return of the Jedi versus the Empire Strikes Back suits, not to mention the fact that the guns are different, and there's just a slight aesthetic change. But otherwise, they're two very different figures that happen to be the same character, just at different points in time, so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like next to each other. So, overall, this is a really solid figure. I know that there are going to be endless comparisons between the Mafex figures and this one, but again, I don't have them, and I really don't care about them either. I don't really get into single one-off figures from companies. I'm very much a line collector, so... I, I collect figure arts, so I got this figure arts, and I waited for this figure arts, and I'm really happy with what we got. If you like the Mafex, that is great. If you like this one, that's great as well. I think this is a really solid figure, though, just for my money and for the weight. It certainly blows away anything Django Fett related. I really do think they kind of learned from the problems on that one. He moves well. He looks really good. He doesn't have the greatest set of accessories, but he kind of has all the normal stuff for a Boba Fett. I always just want a little bit more with my figure arts, and we really just didn't get it. Overall, though, I think this is a really, really solid entry in the line. It was definitely worth the wait for me, and I'm really happy to finally add this one to my figure arts display. So that's going to do it for this look at the SH Figure Arts Boba Fett figure from Bandai Tamashii Nations. Let me know what you guys think. 
Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.